Now I'm going to teach you how to put together an Excel project for examining NPV. And we're going to use the Baldwin Company example from the book. And uh, basically what you want to do is set up your spreadsheet and we'll start with just inputs. And as we go through the project what we're going to do is enter those inputs here and then we'll refer back to these cells with our equations down below. That way, if one of the inputs changes, then we can go back and change that input and everything else changes along with it. Okay, so we start reading through here and they tell us some background on the, uh, on the company and I think the first real number that we come across is the cost of a marketing study. So, marketing study. Now, if you want to make your column as wide as the widest cell, you can just click like this between the lines. And they tell us that marketing study costs $250,000. So, 250, one, two, three, 250,000 bucks. Now, uh, you can format that as dollars, but let's just, there we go. Okay, now, are we actually going to include that? No, and the reason we don't is because that is a sunk cost. No matter what decision we make, that marketing study money is gone. So we're not going to include it. But I went ahead and typed it in because I, I type in all the numbers as I go. Okay, now it says the Baldwin Company is considering investing in a machine to produce bowling balls. The bowling balls will be manufactured in a building owned by the firm and located near Los Angeles. This building, which is vacant and the land, can be sold for 150000 after taxes. Well, do we need to include anything for this building? We already own it. The answer is yes, we must include it because it is an opportunity cost. Because if we chose not to undertake the project, we could sell the building. And so we're going to put that in here. Building and I think it was 150,000. There we go. And we're going to put opportunity cost next to it so we'll remember to include it. Okay, so far so good. Now it says working with his staff he's prepared an analysis, summarizes the assumption as following, the cost of the bowling ball machine is $100,000. That's another uh, number we'll need. Bowling ball machine. And 100,000 bucks. Definitely, we're going to have to use that. Okay, and they give us, oh, an estimated market value at the end of five years of 30,000. So, bowling ball machine and we can come back here and say salvage value and they're telling us that's thirty thousand dollars very good okay now they give us production by year during the five year life of the machine and so I'm going to go down here a little further and now we're going to start putting in some yearly information so I'm going to say year and even though they say five years you want to start with year zero one two three four five I believe that's all the farther we need to go because it's a five-year life project okay so they tell us the production or let's call it sales sales in year zero, basically remember time period zero is the end of the period that precedes it. And so there won't be any sales before we start. So there's no sales in year zero. So we'll skip over to year one. And it looks like we have 5,000 units. In year two we have 8,000 units. Year 3 we have 12,000 units, year 4 we have 10,000 units, and year 5 we have 6,000 units. Now just to make this stand out, I'm going to make this year thing bold so we won't get the year numbers confused with the sales numbers. 
the price of bowling balls in the first year will be twenty dollars. So bowling ball price year one. Let's call that time one. Is twenty dollars. Okay. Bowling ball market is highly competitive, so they believe the price of bowling balls will increase only at 2% per year. So, bowling ball price growth rate, 0.02. And I'm going to go back and format that as a percentage. And we always like two decimal places in this class, so there we go. And let's see. They believe that the, uh, let's see, general inflation rate, 5%. I don't know if we're going to need that, but we can go ahead and put it in. Inflation rate, 0.05. Go back, format that as a percentage with two decimal places. Let's see what else we've got here. The plastic used to produce bowling balls is rapidly becoming more expensive. Uh, because of this, production cash outflows are expected to grow at 10% per year and first year production costs will be $10 per unit. So we've got two more things we need to add in here. By the way, you can insert uh, rows by selecting and then right clicking and then hit insert. Pretty cool. Okay, so here we go. Um, bowling, bowling ball cost time one. And I believe they said that was 10. Uh-oh, it's saying it's a percent. I'm going to change the formatting there. I go up here and I can click on dollars, but let's just do number. There we go. So call that 10. And the bowling ball cost growth rate and that is expected to be 10% per year. So 0.10, and it's already formatted as a percentage. Okay. Oh, they tell us that the corporate income tax rate on this project is 34%. So corporate tax rate, 0 0.34, and it's already formatted as a percentage. Okay, we have enough information now that we can go ahead and calculate some things. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to update this to say sales units, or I could say balls. We definitely don't want to get confused though and think that this is in dollars. Okay, now since I know that, I could also, uh, they've told me what the price of these balls are going to be and how it's going to grow so I could figure that and then that would tell me what kind of revenue I've got coming in. I can also figure the cost per bowling ball and that would tell me what kind of uh, expenses I've got going out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say bowling ball price and year zero it doesn't matter because you're not selling any bowling balls then anyway and the bowling ball uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say equal to, and I'm going to click on this bowling ball price at time one. I'm going to hit enter. That way, if I change this number up here, it changes down below. Also, now I can say that the next one is going to be equal to the previous one multiplied by open parenthesis one plus, and then I'm going to select that growth rate, which is right here, the bowling ball price growth rate. Now, I'll want this cell to continue, I want these cells to continue to reference that particular cell as I pull across. If I don't do anything right now, the next cell will reference B or C7 and then uh, D7 and on. We don't want to do that. And so how do I fix that? I hit F4 and it puts in those little dollar signs and that fixes the cell reference. So I hit enter. And that looks like a 2% increase to me. And I'm going to drag this on over. Now, one thing you'll notice if you look in your book 
is that they have rounded theirs to even dollars and cents on their prices. And we're not going to be doing that. We're going to leave all this stuff unrounded. But if you see a little difference between what we're doing and what they did in the book, that's why. Okay, next we can also figure out bowling, bowling ball cost. And once again, we're going to reference that time one. There we go. And the next one's going to be equal to the prior one multiplied by one plus, okay, what's our growth rate here? Uh, 10%. Oh, wait a minute, that's not right. Yeah, there it is. And now I hit F4 to fix that cell reference. And I can drag that across. So now I'm ready to be able to figure out my sales in dollars and my operating costs. Those will be in dollars too. Of course, it said cost in it, and I really didn't have to say dollars, but because I said it for sales, I'll say it for operating costs. Okay, now how am I going to get this number? Well, it's simply multiplying the number of balls times the price per ball. And then I can drag that over. Did you see how I did that? I grabbed uh, down in the corner, I grabbed this little little black thing with and left clicked and drug it over. Now this is a common thing that happens in Excel. You see these do, uh, pound signs? What that means is that the cell is too narrow to display the full size number. So how do we fix that? Well we just go up here on each one of these, we double click and widen those out. So now we're not seeing dollar or uh, pound signs. Okay, now we find operating costs similarly. We say equal to the number of balls multiplied by the cost per ball. And once again, I'm just gonna grab that little uh, thing down there. First of all, let's change the format of that though. Um, there we go. I'm gonna drag that thing right on over. So far, so good. Okay.